Welcome to a lecture 11.2. Hey, we're almost there. We only got two more sections to go, I think. Okay, so now we are still looking at conic sections, but this time, instead, we're looking at something called the ellipse. Now, an ellipse, if you're looking at a conic section, once again, the conic section is this 3D object here. Conic section, if we put a 2D strip, if you think of a piece of paper through it, the item that it creates, the sort of circular type of an object, is what we would call the ellipse. Now, an ellipse is different than a circle in basically the fact that it's not a fixed distance from the center point. Now, a circle, if you recall, is the same distance the whole way around. Sorry, that's a terrible circle. An ellipse is different. It's sort of stretched out instead of a fatter angle. But in reality, actually, a circle is like an ellipse. It's just a fixed distance in the center. But now we are looking at actual ellipses, so it doesn't have to be the same distance from the center point. So an ellipse is the set of all points in the plane, the sum of whose the distance from the two fixed points, the foci, is a constant sum. What does that mean? Well, and maybe I'll try to see if I can find a video for this. So if you imagine if you stuck two pegs in the ground or in the sand, right? If you stuck two pegs in the ground, you could actually do this at home if you want. And then you got a string, and you attached the string, right? So if you imagine it, you got two sticks, and then you have a loose string, right? If you put your finger in that string and pulled it to form a tight degree angle between the two of them, so let's say your finger's right here, and then you slowly worked your way around the circle with that piece of string, just slowly moving your way around, you'll end up drawing something called an ellipse. So the thing is, this piece of string here the actual length of that string never changes as you're moving your finger around to create the ellipse. That distance does not change. So that's what we would say this distance right here, the sum, so this length plus this length, will always remain a constant. Okay? All you're doing is as you're moving your finger around the two objects, not really a circle, but as you're moving your finger around, the length here and here might change, but the total length of the string remains the same. So, if we have an ellipse with the center at the origin, that's what we're going to be focusing on here. Once again, what is the origin? If you're looking at the xy plane, the origin is this center point right there, 0, 0. So the graph of each of the following equations is an ellipse with a center at the origin. And they have the given properties. So we are looking at two different types of an ellipses, or ellipses. And let's see here. Let me just go ahead and draw a line down here. So the first type of an ellipse. Well, we have the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now, if I went ahead and for now just got rid of those items down there, this looks an awful lot like the equation for a circle, right? And that's because a circle is a special type of an ellipse, where the values by the x squared and the y squared are the same number. However, for an ellipse, that's not true. The values with the x and the y will be different numbers. That's why it's not a perfect circle. So if we have the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1, and they're both divided by these values squared, where, note here, that the a value needs to be bigger than the b value. If the a value squared is bigger than the v value, what do we have? Well, we have the vertices at positive or minus a. Careful here. Notice the value under the denominator is an a squared. So you have to take the square root of that to just get a. And then we have something called the major axis. What is the major axis? Well, that is the bigger one. That would be 2 times your a value, the length. Now your minor axis is the smaller one, hence the name minor. And that would be the vertical length 2 times your b value. So 2 times b, 2 times a. And then our foci, those guys right here, not actually on our graph, but they're kind of what creates it again. Think of that image with the two pegs in the ground and you drawing in the sand. Those two foci are at plus or minus c. How do we get c? It comes kind of from the Pythagorean theorem. c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Not perfectly from the Pythagorean theorem, but that's kind of the imagery that you can create. Okay, so notice here. The main difference between this one and the other ellipse we have on the right is the a value, which is the bigger one, was under the x squared. That's what created one that had fatter on the horizontal than on the vertical. 
when x squared has the a underneath it, or the bigger value under it. So if we look at the other one right here, notice the a, which is always the bigger side, a is always the larger side, the a is now under y. So when the a value, or your bigger value, is under your y, you're going to get an ellipse that is larger along the y values. Okay, so definitely keep that in mind. If the larger number is under the y, you'll have larger value at the y, or to be stretched larger along the y. And if you have the larger number underneath the x, you'll have your larger values along the x-axis. So other than that, it's, they're pretty much very similar, except where the actual number is. So when we have the case where the a squared is bigger under the y, what happens is our vertice is at plus or minus a, but we're talking about the y values this time. And then the vertical length is going to be 2a, and the horizontal length 2b. And then once again, we can find our foci using the exact same method as we would earlier, except our foci is going to be 0, comma, and then a y value. So they're pretty similar ways on finding it, it's just you're going to be switching your x and y values. So now let's take a look at some examples. Example 1. Find the vertices, foci, and the length of the major and minor axes. Stretch, or sorry, sketch the graph. Alrighty, let's take a look at this. First off, how would I know that this equation is not a parabola or a circle? How do I know it's not one of these? Because I may not tell you which one it is on an, uh, on an exam. Well, if you recall, for a parabola, we usually have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, or we have the x squared equals ay. Let me go ahead and erase the sides there because we're not using this one in our class. That's what parabolas look like. So notice, only one of the variables is squared for a parabola. Either the x is squared, oops, I wrote that wrong, or the y is squared. Okay, only one of the variables is squared on a parabola. But the var variable we have here, both of them are squared. So this is not a parabola. We figured that out. Next, how do I know if it's a circle or not? If you recall, the generic equation for a circle is ax squared plus ay squared equals, and we have some r values squared, where a and a are the same number. So we have a problem. The x and the y are squared. So is this a circle? The answer is no, because the x squared and the y squared need to have the same number to be a circle. For x squared and y squared here, we have 25 and 16. Those are not the same number, so this is not a circle. And therefore, we have found out it must therefore be an ellipse. All right, so we have figured out it's an, an ellipse. Let's go ahead and start solving. The next question is, which kind of ellipse is it? Is it going to be larger on the horizontal or larger on the vertical? That depends on which variable has the larger number underneath it. Now, which variable has a larger number underneath it? Well, that would be x. That has the 25. So we know this is the winner. That is what our ellipse is going to end up looking something like. Okay, and we also know it's going to be um, centered at the origin because it's equal to 1. So now, what do we need to know? Well, let's go ahead and find the a and b values. So let me go ahead and erase this here. What are our a and b values? a is always the larger number. Just remember that. a is always the larger number. So a squared equals 25, and then b squared equals 16. But we don't want a squared and b squared. We want a and b. So we'll go ahead and figure that out. We take the positives when we're working with this. So a must equal 25, and b must equal 4. Now for the vertices. What's the formula for vertices? Right here, it's plus or minus a. So let's go ahead and write that down here. Vertices, vertices is going to be plus or minus 5, comma, 0. Once again, those are my a values, plus or minus a. Now the next thing we need to figure out is the foci. So how do we find the foci? Well, the equation for finding foci up here, very similar to the um, Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared minus b squared. 
So our c value squared is going to equal a squared, so 5 squared minus b squared, 4 squared. Once again, um, when you're solving for this, I will look that uh, I would like you to show using the formula. Okay, so don't just write the answer; please write out the formula. All right, so c squared equals 25 minus 16, so that's going to be equal to 9. So c squared equals 9, and then we have c equals plus or minus 3. So that's going to be my foci. Let me go ahead and do this. It's positive 3, 0. Once again, we always fill out the x values when we're working with. Um, the horizontal version for the ellipse. So vertices, so I make sure to box our answers. What else do we need? We need the length of the major and minor axes. Alrighty, so how would we find the length of the major and how would we find the length of the minor? Let's go take a look at the instructions. So the length of the major axis is going to be 2a. The length of the minor is going to be 2b. Let's go ahead and do that. So major axis, major axis, it's going to be 2a, which is going to be 2 times 5, so it'll be 10. So the major axis is going to be 10. And then the minor axis, that's going to be 2b. So that'll be 2 times, what we say, 4, and that'll be 8. So the length of my minor axis is going to be 8. All right, so now let's go ahead and sketch this graph. So first things first, we're going to head and start at the origin from here. That's when we know where it's centered. What else do we know? Well, we know the foci are at positive and negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. We'll go ahead and label that 3, 0, negative 3, 0. Alrighty. Now let's find the vertices. So that's going to be at positive or negative 5. 3, 4, 5. So negative 5, 0, 5. Positive 5, 0. Okay, so we've done that, we've done that. Let's go ahead, major axis, what does that mean? Well, that's the distance from the center to the outside. So the major should be 10 the whole distance. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yep. Now the minor axis, that's supposed to be 8 the whole distance. So halving it on either side, half of 8 is 4. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, boop. 1, 2, 3, 4, beep. And that is 0, negative 4, and this is 0, 4. Okay, so when you draw this, um, do as best you can to create curves at each of the points, because remember this is sort of a curved object. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine is obviously not perfect, but as long as it looks like you put effort into making it curved, that'd be awesome. Once again, don't do this. I'm doing the blue line. Make sure you don't have sharp angles, because that would be a very different thing. So, blue line is a no-no. No, sad face. Red line is, it's not perfect, but it's better. Make sure they're curved on either side. Okay, example two. Find the foci of the ellipse 4x squared plus 36y squared equals 144 and sketch the graph. All right, what is the foci? Well, if you recall, the foci comes from the equation c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So in order to find the foci, we need to find a and b. And where do we find a and b from? Well, we find them from the equation. So let's take a look at our equation. Um, you know what? This is not in a form I recognize. I need it equal to 1 to work for an ellipse. So how would I get this equal to 1? That's one of the main things I need for an ellipse. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by 144. And then I can get that 1 on this side here, which is what I need. So when we divide both sides by 144, we get x squared over 36 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. Okay, now this is a form that I recognize. So here we go. Um, the 36 is the larger value, and the 36 is under the x, which means what kind of a ellipse are we going to have? It's going to be one where it's larger along the horizontal. All right. So that's my a value, or at least that's my a squared value. So my a squared value equals a squared equals 36 and b squared equals 4, which means that a equals 6 and b equals 2. Now we need to find the foci. So foci 
that'll be c squared equals a squared minus b squared. And c squared is going to equal, it's kind of going backwards here because we already know this. And then we'll end up with c squared equals, and we have, what do we have, 32. So c is going to equal plus or minus 4 root 2. Now when we put that into our calculators, that comes out to approximately about 5.7, but we don't answer with approximations for this, unless told otherwise. You always graph with approximations, but you answer with the actual values. So my foci is going to be plus or minus 4 root 2, 0. Okay, and there's my foci. Awesome, the main thing we wanted to find. And now we need to sketch the graph. So what do we need for sketching the graph? Well, we should find the vertices and the major and minor axis. So what is the vertices? The vertices are going to be from our a value, which is going to be the 36. So it's going to be plus or minus 6 comma 0. Let's go ahead and box that. All right, so we found our foci, we found our vertices. Now we need the major and minor axes. So let's see. Let's go ahead and write this down here. Major, major axis. In this case, it's going to be, well, it's always actually. That value, so 2a is going to equal 2 times the 6, so it would be 12. And then the minor axis. Minor axis is going to be 2b, which will be 2 times 2, which is 4. All right, let's go ahead and graph this. Let's see, vertices are going to be at positive minus 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Once again, labeling, negative 6, 0, 6, 0. And then, that's basically the same thing for the major axis. So the minor axis helps us find the y in this case. So 2 in either direction. So it'll be negative 2. Oops, wrong way. 0, negative 2. And, boop, boop. 0, 2. Okay, and then last thing, we do need to label the foci. So that'll be plus or minus 4 root 2, which he said is about 5.7. It's a little bigger than 5. It's actually pretty close to 6. Um, I'm going to just do this for the sake of graphing. So 4 root 2, 0, and then... Oh, that's to be negative 4 root 2, 0. And then 4 root 2, 0. All right, so we've gotten all of our elements in. Now we just need to draw the graph. Once again, the foci are not actually on their graph. They're sort of the pinpoints for how we create it. So you're not going to connect your foci to the graph. But here we go. Trying to get some curves in. And there we go. I'm actually pretty pleased with that one. All righty, moving on. Example three. Find the equation of an ellipse where the length of the major axis is 10 and the length of the minor axis is 6, with the foci on the y-axis. Sketch the graph. Okay, hmm. Well, we're given the major axis is 10, and the minor axis is 6, and then we're also told the foci are on the y-axis. Okay, so since the foci are on the y-axis, that means we have an ellipse facing this way, which means the a-squared value is going to be under the y-squared. Okay, so we know we're using that equation. So we're going to use x squared over, and in this case the b will be under the x, plus y squared over the a squared equals 1. Okay, we know we're going to use that. Why? Because the foci were on the y-axis. Now we need to figure out how to find our a and b values. Well, we're told that the major axis is 10 and the minor is 6. Well, what we know is for the major axis, that is 2a. And we're told it's equal to 10. So we have that 2a must equal 10. So solving, we'll have a is equal to 5. Let's do the same thing for the minor axis. So minor axis, we know the formula for a minor axis is 2b. And in our case here, the minor axis is equal to 6. So that must equal 6. So solving, we'll get b must be equal to 3. Alrighty, so we figured those out. This guy and this guy. Let's go ahead and plug them in to the appropriate places. And we'll end up with x squared over 3 squared plus y squared over 5 squared equals 1. So then we have x squared over 9 plus y squared over 25 is equal to 1. Okay, so we've now found the equation. Awesome. Next thing we need to do is sketch the graph. 
So what do we need to sketch the graph? Well, we need to figure out what the foci is. Okay, so finding foci. The equation is always c squared equals a squared minus b squared. c squared is going to equal, so a squared is the 5 squared minus the 3 squared. So that is going to end up equaling, well, we'll have c is equal to plus or minus 4. Let's go ahead and write that down. So that's going to be 0 plus or minus 4 because we're on the x-axis, or the y-axis, sorry. Alrighty, and then we have our major axis is 10, minor axis is 6. Let's go ahead and draw this in. So foci plus or minus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, negative 4. And then for the rest of the equation, let's see. With the major axis and minor axis, we can go ahead and draw this out. So we know major axis is 10, so either side should be 5 from the origin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And what point is that? That's 0, negative 5, and 0, 5. And then for the minor axis, that's 6, so half of that is 3, so 3 out each direction. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So we have 3, 0, and negative 3, 0. And let's go ahead and draw in our ellipse. Once again, try and make it curved, make sure there's no angles on it. And uh, that works. Alrighty, we have graphed or sketched the graph. Now let's look at something called eccentricity. That is a big word. Alrighty, so what is eccentricity? For the ellipse, the one here or the one here, which you both looked at, where A is bigger than B, the eccentricity called lowercase e, is the number e equals c divided by a. So once again, remember c comes from the foci, which was c squared, a squared minus b squared, and a comes from, well, the larger number squared, where c equals square root of a squared minus b squared, and the eccentricity of every ellipse satisfies what? Well, the eccentricity is always less than 1. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. If we have the eccentricity of 0 0.1, we'll have something smaller this way. If the eccentricity is about 0 0.5, so half, it gets a little wider this way. And then as it slowly gets to be a bigger and bigger number, it slowly becomes wider and wider in that direction. So as the eccentricity grows, it gets wider and wider in the x value directions. Or, as, or the bigger e is, the longer the circle is, or the ellipse is, sorry, not the circle. Example 4. Find the equation of an ellipse with eccentricity or eccentricity of a half and vertices plus or minus 6. Sketch the graph. Alright, so we're given, well, what are we given? We're given that E is equal to a half and we know that the vertices are plus or minus 6 comma zero. Well, if you recall, vertices always come from our a value. So we know that a must equal plus or minus six. And then what do we know about e? We know that e is equal to c divided by a. Now, Let's see, can we do a little bit of algebra here? We know that e equals a half, and that's right there. And then we know that a is equal, and in this case we're going to be using the positive 6, because that's what we have in the formula, a is equal to positive 6. So, we can plug that into the equation to find c. So let's go ahead and do that, finding c. Look at e, which is a half, equal to c divided by 6. Okay, so solving for c, multiply both sides by 6. We'll get that 3 equals c. Okay, so we're still trying to write the equation of an ellipse. One thing I forgot to mention in the beginning is what kind of an ellipse is this? Is this going to be opened more vertically or horizontally? That depends on our vertice. Notice we're given the x value, which means we're going to be going for this type of a vertice, or that type of an ellipse. So the formula we're going to use is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Once again, how did I know that? 
the vertices was given for the x value. Okay, so we have found, well, we have a already for my equation. And we found c just now. Can we use c and a to find b? The answer is yes, we can. So we know the equation for foci is c squared equals a squared minus b squared. And we know that c is equal to 3, so 3 squared equals, and we know a is equal to 6. So we can use this to solve for b. So we have 9 minus, and let's see, we have, that's going to be 36 equals negative b squared. So what will we get here? We'll have 27 equals negative b squared. So then we get the square root of 27 is equal to b plus or minus. Alrighty. We found B. Awesome. One other thing real quick. Let's go ahead and label our foci, which we have from the C up here. It's going to be plus or minus 3, 0. Okay, so we have our B and our A values. Let's go ahead and write the equation. Sorry, got a little messy on my work here. Hopefully the labeling is helping. So the equation is x squared over, and our A is what was given in the beginning is 6 plus y squared over, and our b value we found here because we were able to find c equals to 1. And then we'll have, and notice, um, the right way to write the equation would be without the squares. So that'll be 36 plus y squared over 27 equals 1. And there we have our equation. Awesome. Now we ne just need to graph this. Um, one thing we're missing, we are missing our max, our major axis and our minor axis. So major axis is going to be 2 times a, so that'll be 2 times the 6, that'll be 12. And our minor axis, that's going to be 2 times b, so that'll be 2 times the square root of 27, which comes out to be about roughly equal to 10.4 for graphing purposes. Let's put that in parentheses. But this also comes out to be um, 6 root 3 when I simplify. Okay, so let's go ahead and use that for graphing. Let's see. So we have our equation awesome. For graphing though, what do we need for graphing? We'll use our foci for graphing. We'll use our major axis. And then we'll use our minor axis as well as the given vertice. All right. So foci plus or minus 3. OK, let's go ahead and draw those in. So plus or minus 3, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So we have 3, 0, negative 3, 0. And the last things to graph in. Let's go ahead and use our vertices, plus or minus 6. And that's the plus 6, and that's the minus 6, so negative 6, 0. 6, 0. And then, how do we find the other points? Let's go ahead and use the minor axis to find the other points. It's roughly about 10.4 in length. So half of 10.4 is about, is about 5.2. This is not official. That's just my mental calculations. So it's about 5.2 from the center. Let's go ahead and do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.2. So that approximation was about 5.3, but I'm not going to graph with the approximation. So it's supposed to be half of the 6 root 3, so it'll be 3 root 3 is half of 6 root 3. So this will be 0, 3 root 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.2 is going to be 0, negative 3 root 3. And once again, real quick, side note, 3 root 3 is about the 5.2, which is what you're graphing. Okay, last thing to do. Let's go ahead and draw in our ellipse. Okay, let's see. Waiting for my pen to load for a second. All right, it loaded. Okay, and there we go. Yeah, all right, that'll do. Okay, and that is it for 11.2. Please email me if you have any questions.